Hey everyone, Saul here. In this video, I'll be discussing something that isn't necessarily a new concept or anything, but is still something I feel like doesn't get discussed enough. And this one will be especially useful for intermediate players. If you're more of a new player, I would probably just keep this in mind as you progress and get better at the game. But this is probably something you'll want to revisit later as a concept and as something you do in future leagues maybe your second or third league, you start doing this more, paying more attention to it. But you definitely want to, as an experienced or intermediate player, want to be doing this more regularly. And that thing is fine-tuning your loot filter. Now, the idea behind this is that as you optimize your character and your farming strategy, you want to show less loot on the ground. Because at a certain point, it becomes not worth the time spent picking it up and organizing it and listing things for sale and things like that. I say listing things for sale and such, but this is also a concept that applies to solo cell found. Many of you know I play pretty much only solo cell found softcore, so this applies to any league, any situation in which you're worried about efficiency. Because even in a solo cell found environment, you probably want to show more rares early on in the league, uh, get some gear to pick up. It's an easy way to fill out slots with items that you really don't have good access to otherwise. And eventually you'll have those slots filled and it will become significantly harder to find an upgrade on the ground. So for example, you find a pair of boots with two resistances, life and movement speed, and you craft something else on it. It's going to be very hard to find a pair of boots to replace those. Maybe you get a couple pair of those for other characters based on attribute requirements and base types. And then you're still picking up boots, but you're vendoring all of them because they aren't upgrades. That means the time you spent picking it up, identifying it, looking at it, vendoring it, essentially it was worth very little because you just got some alteration shards out of it. Then as you go to endgame, if you're in trade, you might end up buying a pair if you're in solo cell found, or need something more specific, you'll end up crafting a pair from a base, so then you can go ahead and not show boots on your loot filter anymore. That's kind of a needlessly specific example, but it can be applied to gear in general. And to highlight the importance of this, I have a map here. I'm in uh, Solo Self on Standard right now, so currently using my Day 1 Trial of the Ancestors filter. Now, obviously, I don't need pretty much any of this pile of loot on Standard, because if I really want an item, I have a ton of resources from literal years worth of playing the game that I can make something. So I'm going to continue throughout the map here. This is not necessarily a juiced map or anything like that. 155 quant, 87 rarity. I've got some quant and rarity on my gear here. 60 quant, 96 rarity. And when it gets to the point that you have so much loot that it's kind of causing the names of things to shift around and cause inaccuracies there, then you definitely have too much and should tighten your filter up a little bit. Beyond that, it's like I said about filtering things you don't need anymore. So as I just mentioned, I'm not going to find any rare items on the ground that I'm going to want on standard. I have hundreds of divine vessels on standard, so I don't need to show them anymore. And I keep saying standard because that's where I am, but this applies to any league that you have sufficiently progressed in, Next league, once I get like 20, 25, 30 Divine Vessels, I'm going to hide them. Because I'm not going to make enough characters or use enough Divine Vessels that I'm going to run out. So any time I spend up looking at, picking up, or otherwise handling Divine Vessels is going to be wasted for me. So I can just go ahead and hide them. I'll run around a little bit more here. Accidentally opened an abyss, so I'm going to hang out in this direction. If you're in solo cell found, it's really about your personal needs as far as the gear you're going to need, 
the materials you might need, uh, and a little bit of personal preference. So for example, you might want to show one tier of essence lower than most people would, and that's fine. It's a an item that you're going to get in small enough quantities and from specific enough content that it's not a huge deal. But say you already have 10,000 alterations on your filter, do you really want to show stacks of three or four alterations? You still might pick up stacks of 20 because maybe you use them for something or convert them to jewelers and fusings. But you probably don't want to pick up the three or four stacks because rare mob loot conversion, you're going to get tons of them. So again, I'm throwing around examples and showing my screen of basically garbage here. Like I'm not going to pick up any of this. What I would suggest doing is making note of the things you're not picking up. Are you playing a bow build and have no interest in playing a caster build? Then probably don't show wands or scepters, for example. If you have no interest in playing a melee build, definitely don't show any melee weapons. Certain divination cards can be a net positive overall, but if you don't like picking them up, then you might as well hide them. That would be things like Reign of Chaos. I think Reign of Chaos is typically worth picking up from a solo self on standpoint, but I just don't do it because that's a lot of clicking that I don't want to bother with. So if we switch over to my more strict filter, if I can find it, Crucible SSF Strict is the one I was looking for. You can see I'm not showing any of that anymore. And we can walk around here. It's a little broken, this filter in particular, but Scours, yeah, I'm fine picking up because I am pretty picky about the maps I run. Crimson Temples, obviously I still want because it's the map I'm running. Uniques, certain uniques all show. Heavy Belt as a base, obviously I want to show in case I get a Mage Blood or something. Serpentine Staff, I could probably hide. So in this case, I would make note of that. I would look up the base and say, is this... Is there a unique I still want from this base? If not, I'll just hide it completely. And I'll do that with various other types of items as well. And the way I'll do that is by heading over to Filter Blade. So here we are in Filter Blade. I tend to use Never Sinks as a base. If you don't, the same principles apply. Uh, you will have to edit your filter more manually though, and you can do that. I personally don't do that, so I don't have any particular input as for tips on doing that yourself, but if you're the type of person that wants to open up a text editor and manually alter your filter, you can still do that. You'll probably know more about that than me, so I can't offer any particular excuse me, tips about updating your filter manually, but the same principle applies in that you want to find whatever it is that you're showing and apply or change a rule to not show it anymore. Here in Filter Blade though, you can see I've loaded up my old Crucible filter. We have an overview here. Uh, it's set to strict right now. It might actually be a little bit higher than that. <laughs> or I chose this base, I'm kind of guessing here because it was so long ago. I likely chose this base because the higher ones hid some currency items I didn't want to hide. For example, hyper-efficient players in Trade League can be perfectly fine not showing Chaos Orbs. I am not fine hiding Chaos Orbs, because in Solo Cell Found you're going to need Chaos to fuel your map device crafting. So I prefer not to hide them. So I've personally found that Strict Filter works for me, and I use that as my base, and can head over to Customize. In this case, I want to look up Serpentine Staff, which looks like it's included in Boss Drops, boss drop Uniques. So I'm actually going to head over to the wiki and look this up real quick. Ah, here we go. So Sire of Shards was the one I got, and I don't particularly want a Sire of Shards. Can of Kulamak, though, I maybe do want. That comes from Katarina specifically. So, a couple possibilities here. What you could do 
is only show ones of a certain item level. If you only plan on fighting Katarina in a level 83 zone, that means the cane will always be level 85. So you could do that. However, the fight itself has a variable area level, so that might not always be the case. Another thing you could do is say, you know what, I don't want to see Sire of Shards while I'm mapping because it's relatively common, and I don't run Betrayal all that often. So when you kill Katarina, you can just hold Alt and see the item. I don't particularly feel like doing that, so in this case I am going to leave the item on my filter. That's the basic overview though, or I guess to show another quick example here, if I wanted to hide rusted scarabs, I could look up scarabs on the right here. Tier 4 scarabs looks like they're listed as. And if I really don't want to show particular scarabs, then I could hide them here. I'm fine picking up rusted scarabs, so I will leave them. Uh, same thing applies though in reverse as well. If you think the filter is hiding something, say you bump up strictness, you can always search over here and see what's going on there. If you have one of the item that you are trying to hide or show in your filter tweaking, I would load up the filter after you've made the changes and always verify if it's important to or verify that the change has been made by dropping one in an area and then seeing if it makes the right noise, has the right visual, etc. If you're just hiding like rare boots or something, if something's wrong, you'll know because you'll be seeing rare boots where well, you probably shouldn't. However, you could still see, th see things like corrupted boots or something like that, in which case a more specific rule is probably still being applied to it, in which case, again, I would probably make note of that and do another batch of filter updates whenever I uh, had enough things I wanted to switch out. Alongside that, I would also say if you are increasing your strictness especially, or you're making a lot of updates, I would make a new filter based on the old one, as opposed to just updating the old one. Because if you want to revert, in my opinion, it'll probably be easier to switch to the old filter and work from there again than it would be to kind of work backwards and re-add what you took away or show again what you had hidden. So that's about all I had for this one. Hopefully this was a helpful tip in some way. As a quick recap here, the reason I highlight the importance of updating your loot filter is that you spend a lot of time, energy, and eye strain looking through and picking up various pieces of loot on the ground that may not be worth your time based on what you're doing. A general good practice to follow is that if you aren't going to pick up an item, or if you aren't going to at least hover over it and see what it is in the case of uniques, then you should hide it from your loot filter. Ideally, you want as high a percentage of the loot that you see to be picked up as possible. You can achieve that by altering your filter, by making note of things that you aren't picking up, and then later hiding them from your filter to increase its strictness. If you have any questions or want any suggestions from me, definitely let me know down in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.